Hey, Spine and Sporters. I'm Garrett Mills. I'm the patient care coordinator manager, and I've been with Spine and Sport for eight months now. And I've had the honor and pleasure to be a culture captain and be part of the movement that is the Spine and Sport way. This Lunch and Learn is going to be all about organizational culture. We're going to be diving into what culture even means and what does that mean for us as employees, as team members, as employee owners. And so sit back, enjoy your lunch, write down questions. I am us in, in the medium of this and we'll be answering your questions after this. And we just hope that you enjoy what we've got to offer. And here is Hillary. Hello fellow Spine and Sporters, I'm Hillary. I'm Spine and Sports Recruitment Director and a Culture Captain. I've been with the company for 17 years when we were just three clinics. A lot has changed over the years, but one thing remains consistent from the beginning, and that is our company culture and mission. And teamwork and quality of care are two of the main aspects of Spine and Sport culture and values that I deeply agree with. So these values paired with my loyalty and commitment to the company and my work family are what make me a spine and supporter. So what is organizational culture? It's shared beliefs, values, practices that define a company or an organization. It's the way our staff carries out the day-to-day -day tasks and it's transferred from generation to generation. So from the oldest employees to the newest. While laying down the foundation for culture creation, the majority of the team must share the same sorts of values of the culture. That's how the culture thrives. It has to be passed down from generation to generation, so those that are oldest to those that are newest, and it must shape the way we behave and the perceptions that we have. Regardless of whether your business is two friends in a garage or a global corporation, your business will have a particular vibe. This is often referred to as organizational culture and can be defined as a set of key values, beliefs, understandings and norms shared by members of an organization. An organizational culture will occur naturally, but it can also be grown and shaped over time. This is important as not all cultures are conducive to healthy working environments. Generating a positive organizational culture not only makes your company a great place to work, but also increases productivity and reduces employee turnover. But how can we change an organization's culture? This is a notoriously difficult thing to do, but it must be a priority for any successful company. Business guru Peter Drucker sums it up best when he says, culture eats strategy for breakfast. A company who has embraced their organization's culture is Google. By designing unorthodox work environments, encouraging employees to spend 20% of their time on personal projects, and openly embracing failure, Google fosters innovation and instills it into their culture. While there is no one solution to creating an amazing culture, companies who are prepared to prioritize and resource it create their own self-fulfilling prophecy as they attract and retain amazing talent who are motivated by more than a paycheck. Hi, I'm Sharon. I've been at Spine and Sport for 10 years now. I started as an aide. I was published with the Research Foundation, did a lot of work with um, Dr. Mayer and Dr. Verna. Uh, when we partnered with LA Fitness, I was able to grow into more of a managerial role in charge of the business operations at our Encinitas Clinic. And then a year and a half ago, I became the integration director at Spine and Sport. So I help our company grow through opening brand new clinics and through mergers and acquisitions. I integrate our systems, our business operations, and very importantly, our culture into other companies that want to partner with us. One of the reasons I've stayed at Spine and Sport for 10 plus years is because of the company culture. I've had the opportunity to continue learning and growing into different roles. And based on my personal passions and strengths, I've been able to be in different roles and make an impact on our company and the community that we serve in different ways. 
And basically I've found my people. This is a family that really cares about their employees and I can't imagine working with a different group of people day in and day out than I do right now. So what is seen and not seen of culture? Some things our patients or whoever comes up off the street and into our clinics, they can visibly see some of the practices, the language, symbols of our culture. You know, they see that we warm people up on the treadmill or a bike, not laying down with a heat pack. They see our logo and our signage that's consistent, our brand, um, the language we use. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Smith, you've had back pain for 20 years, but current literature shows that you know, we quote evidence-based medicine and we use research and uh, publish articles to back up what we're saying to patients and to educate them. Uh, so that's something that any patient can notice when they come into our clinics, uh, but some things you can't see. So one cannot see the norms, the values and assumptions that we live day in and day out at Spine and Sport. So I think one, one thing that patients may not obviously see is the teamwork in our clinics. There's so much that happens between getting a referral in central auth and the patient care coordinator calling to establish that relationship and schedule their first appointment. And then of course they show up late and the original PT who was gonna see them on the schedule is uh, running late with another patient and you know, your assistant or your aide, we assume and expect that at the clinic, we all help each other to provide the best quality of care to provide the best experience for the patient. So however that happens and works out, the patient may not even see that or know all the teamwork that has happened, but that's something that happens every single day, every hour at Spine and Sport. So we have shared assumptions as a part of company culture. Shared assumptions are the thoughts and the feelings that members of the Spine and Sport culture take for granted and believe to be true. We have a catchphrase at Spine and Sport that's a part of our brand um, from the late Vert Mooney. Do you want to feel better or do you want to get better? So I think this is an example of a shared assumption that we have. Uh, we're not just here to be massage envy and give the patients whatever they think they want or think they need, right? If they have um, a disability, dysfunction, I, I love when we get patients that have had, you know, pain for 10 years because what better place to try to set them on the right track than spine and sport. Our therapists are not afraid to have those difficult and very real conversations where I think other places would do shy away or they're afraid, um, namely when it comes to the spine. This chronic spine pain is, comes with a lot of other psychological factors and I think um, at Spine and Sport, we have the shared assumption that we we will try as much as we, to the best of our ability to get through to that patient and use real evidence-based practice to actually improve that person's function, not just feed into their, their pain or whatever emotionally they are going through. Um, I think we all count on each other and expect that we educate the patient properly no matter what. Hi, welcome. Today I'd like to talk to you about organizational culture. When we think about culture, we often talk about the glue that holds an organization together. But what does that really mean? There are three levels of organizational culture according to Xing. I'd like to show you these three levels and how they relate to, of all things, an iceberg. So, an iceberg underneath the water is actually much bigger than what we see. What we see, when we think about organizational culture, are what we consider the organization's artifacts. When we walk into an office environment, artifacts are those symbols, those representations of the organization, what they stand for. People wearing gear, 
um, proud of who they are and what they stand for. Part of those artifacts are also the way people say things and speak about the organization. So it's what we see, what we hear, and what we feel when we walk into an organization or surrounded by an organization. Sometimes it's easy to identify, but difficult to understand. When we think about how we get to the point of what our artifacts are, we actually have two levels within our iceberg. First here, we have the organization's values and beliefs. And below the values and beliefs, we have these underlying assumptions. Now, values and beliefs can be as simple as the organization's mission statement, value statement, as to who they are, and beliefs around the organization as to why they do what they do. When you look at the underlying assumption, it's harder to put a finger on what those are and where they come from. It's those perceptions and, and ways that an organization does things that we actually don't even maybe sometimes know why. Sometimes the organizational culture is that they just work on Saturdays because we just do or because they just do. And no one's really stopped to think about why. Does it make sense? Does it tie to our values, beliefs, and who we are as an organization? So we have what we see we have what we can't see. And when we consider these values and beliefs, sometimes it can be a bit of an organizational tension. Because the values and beliefs that are on paper could be very different than the culture once you're within an organization. So when we look at organizational culture, there's often a much bigger underlying background as to how the organization got to where we are. So there we are, three levels of organizational culture, our artifacts, our values and beliefs, and our underlying assumptions. Hi everyone, this is Nina. I'm one of the culture captains here at Spine and Sport. I've been with the company for five years. When I started, I was a marketing rep out in the field full time. We had eight clinics at the time. Now we have 20 and over the five years now, I have been able to grow professionally as well. And I am the marketing director overseeing the team. It has been really exciting to see not only the growth of the company, but finding a home where I can grow professionally. Something that really resonated with me from day one, working with upper management here at Spine and Sport has been their willingness to change and adapt and grow. Um, part of that growth is making mistakes and they are also really understanding of that is a part of pro the process, especially with young leadership and they are very into coaching and kind of helping you through the different moments as you learn as a leader and that has been something that's been really helpful for me professionally and personally and really made me feel like this is the place to be. I get to talk to you guys today about two things, values and norms and symbols, both important in how we kind of define our culture, understand what culture is, and understand how we can kind of evolve our culture moving forward. Um, values are the basic beliefs people hold that specify general preferences and behaviors and define what is right and wrong. Science order values are reflected in our morals customs and established practices. Norms are the rules that govern behaviors of our employees. Symbols are any visible object, act, or event that conveys meaning to others. Examples of that are how you dress, especially professionally in the clinic, the layout, how we choose to lay out our clinic, very open concept design that's definitely on purpose and it's to allow the patients to see each other and inspire each other to get better. Our slogans that we use, um, even spine and sporter, you guys may have heard that term be thrown around a bit. Um, that definitely helps to unite and bond people together, forming a common culture. 
and ceremonies. Now, when you think of ceremonies as finance for, um, you may think, what does that really mean? That can be anything from acknowledging people at the holiday party, which we do every year to acknowledge people's 10 year anniversary to even acknowledging people's one year anniversary both by giving them a succulent and also kind of making that a really public announcement. Those are just different small examples of ceremonies that we do here at Sinus Ford. specific words used within our organization on a regular basis have a major impact on our company's culture. The language we use acts as a moral compass for ourselves and our colleagues, influencing how we think, act, and feel in different situations. It also impacts the way we behave at work and the types of processes and company rituals we create. For example, you may have heard of the company Zappos. It's an online shoe and clothing retailer. They're known for the extreme lengths their customer reps have gone to make their customers happy. Their number one core value is deliver wow through service, and their mission is delivering happiness to customers, employees, and vendors. Since they have included this in their mission statement and core values, as a result, 75% of their business comes from repeat customers. This strong customer-focused language is backed by the types of processes and rituals they have created. We all spend most of our lives at work, and it can and should be a place where we can go to develop, perform, and improve. Humans are social creatures and being able to communicate makes us comfortable. Culture is built on communication as is organizational success or failure. If we're deliberate about the language that we use, it will empower us to work cohesively and successfully. So we've talked about what is culture and what are the values and norms? What are the symbols and languages used? And now it's time to put it into practice. At Spine and Sport, we want culture to feel inclusive and encourage collaboration and trust. We're proud of our history and how we got here, and we're dedicated to our patients and employees. We want to encourage learning and empower our employees to continually better themselves. In a healthy culture, employees view themselves as part of a team and gain satisfaction from helping the overall company succeed. So we want to continue that and foster a team-based approach. When employees sense that they are contributing to a successful group effort, their level of commitment and productivity, and thus the quality of the care we provide or dedication to our projects are likely to increase and improve. Then we're gonna go into socialization, which is basically the onboarding process of how we bring new people into our culture into the family that is spine and sport to have them become a spine and supporter they have to know our lingo they have to know our symbols the way we speak to each other the way we treat patients the way we deliver high quality of care this is what socialization is i just want to thank all of you for being a part of this lunch and learn if you 
want to be a culture ambassador, you can email culture at spinesport.com because we need you. We need more people that are going to make an impact for the spine sport culture. So if you want to be part of the team, if you're passionate about people, which I know we all are because we're in the people business, don't hesitate to email us because we need you. We need to have more culture ambassadors to make an impact. So please reach out to one of the culture captains that you've seen on this video, as well as send an email. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day.